Hey guys, Space Marine 658. This is going to be a quick episode, just kind of going over how to install 1.13, um, as well as how to kind of find different things on the forum. Now I'm going to do two different ways to install because some people have had issues with um, installing directly from Steve. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So first thing you want to do is you want to go just to the main forum page. It's kind of just the default launch page. Normally there's a little head tag up here. For some reason it's not loading today, but it could just be uh, the website's being worked on. Um, and you're gonna come down here and you're gonna wanna look for C-sharp installation. So those of you looking to install 1.13, just go there. And then in here, um, we have the C-sharp full installation version 1.0 updated to 1.13. Now currently this is the best version to install if you can. Um, I actually couldn't install this because my computer gave an error that um, it thought there was a virus. Basically, there's a backdoor um, file that it doesn't like. That it, It's not used for anything bad. It's just kind of a, if I understand it correctly, it's just a backdoor for the code to let it run better. Um, I'm not sure exactly the function. I haven't looked through it myself too much, um, done any digging into the code. But as far as I'm aware, that's what it is. But if you can, you can install it this way, and then you're good to go. The patch is already applied. Um, worst case scenario, if you can't get it that way, what you can do is you can actually come down here um, and there's an installation mirror and in here you want to look for version 1.5.1 and pick, click the mega here or any of these really, but I usually prefer mega myself. So you'll click this, install this version, this is going to give you version 1.5.1 and then you want to come back and install the patch for 1.13 and then what you want to do is I'll show you kind of how it's gonna work. Um, so this is an older version. Uh, this is my backup for my main series that's going on right now. Um, so I wanna back it up. So I can play a little bit on 1.13, but also still have the old version. What you wanna do is you'll wanna delete this, exe, and then you wanna delete the drop or database file. So this file, this file, this file. You'll delete these three and this from your install. And then from there, you're going to open up your zip which is going to be um, 1.13 right here. You're going to open this up and it's going to give you the exe and the database. You want to delete the save files because they will not carry over. Um, but you'll take these and you'll copy them into here. I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to override my backup. Um, but you'll copy them into this file, the wherever you've saved the Aurora game. And what it's going to do is once you delete these and put those new ones in there, which is what I did over here, this is the actual version. I updated this version. So this went from a 1.12 to a 1.13. And what it'll do is it'll just take over the application. It's going to have all the data here. So you'll be up to date because all the database is going to be new. And boom, you'll be good to go. And then from here, you can start a new game. Um, we'll just go through that real quick just so I can kind of show you. Let's see. What you want to do is, um, shoot, it's been a little bit since even I've done this because um, that series I've been working on has been working on for a little while. But you're going to want to click on the settings, this gear icon. This is going to be the example game, but you're going to want to go uh, new game and in here, name it whatever will be memorable. So like uh, series two, and then you'll want to select the maximum number of systems. You can leave all this default if you'd like, um, makes it really easy to set up. I'm going to walk through some of these settings and kind of show you what you can set up. So you got maximum number of systems. So if you want a very small game, cause say you got a bit of a potato computer, you can have this much lower so that way it's a bit easier. Plus if you want a little bit faster of a game, you don't have to search through all the different systems. Then you have local system generation chance. Um, this is the chance of newly discovered systems linking to a local system. Meaning essentially um, each system has a number of which it can be entered. And this setting uh, only applies to, basically this applies to um, what are the odds that a system that you have has a system near it when you're regenerating stuff? Um, and it's pretty high, 50%, that, but that's, I mean, it's to be expected. And this is the generation spread. Um, so basically, this is the maximum difference in system numbers between newly discovered local system and the system from which it was entered. Um, this is basically just another uh, part of that generation where it's like, you know, how many stars are generating, how many connections can you have? Is there a connection that, you know, when you jump through, is there a connection that isn't going to be able to be found until you go to a different system that links back to it? Um, this is your construction cycle time. Um, each construction phase kind of gives you um, a certain amount of build points and such, and this is sort of the interval between construction phases. Whenever this ends, this ticks over essentially, it calculates how many build points you have 
um, in that interval, and that's what gives you construction, essentially. Um, this is the difficulty modifier. Of course, you know, 100 is normal, 90% easier, 110% harder, as you can see down below. It kind of, the descriptions down below give you a pretty good idea of what everything does. Um, they have research speed, so of course, you know, same with difficulty. Lower number means easier, higher number means more difficult. Terraforming speed, survey speed. Now this is the NPR generation chance by player. This is basically, if you come into a system, what are the odds of you generating a system? Um, and this is by the AI. So what you can do is you can have this set to zero, so the AI can never find other AI. Well, what that means though, is if the AI spreads quickly, there's an odd chance that you might be the only two aliens in the galaxy, which could be cool, um, but that's what that means. And then the 30% is sort of the player as you explore, you can set this however you'd like. And then you got ruin generation chance. This is basically how likely is it for you to uh, find ruins in a system. Uh, minimum comments per system, you can set this to be pretty high. Um, like I said, not all systems will have comments. Some people like the more realistic having lots of comments because most systems in real life have comments. Um, and this is a truth countdown. Um, let's see, yeah. So it's basically if you have a truce with an AI, uh, this is basically if you're sharing the same system, the home system, this is like if you spawn three different empires on Earth, um, this lets you have a truce so that way, um, oh, like it says right there, I didn't even see that. This is multiplayer games with multiple NPRs on Earth. Um, then you have Space Master Password in case you wanted to have that kind of multiplayer um, or at least shared game. So if you want to pass the game around. Um, that way no one could log into the Space Master except for like somebody set to do that. Um, and then you have detection, which is you have normal normal in all systems. So basically sensors are normal with two or more races present, um, none without player presence, which basically means that um, if players aren't in there, um, then there is no detection going on in that system. There's no like, uh, I'm, not, I'm trying to remember, automatic without... But yeah, basically this this is is plays a lot into the detection, like aliens detecting each other and you detecting aliens and like uh, that's sort of how that plays. I usually leave that as default. And then this is the soul disaster. So with this, you can actually um, set some cool little events if you want something a little bit more role play. So you can have soul warming, cooling, or death spiral. Essentially the warming is global warming, but through the sun because the sun's actually getting hotter. And then global cooling, except the cool the, the cooling is coming from the sun getting colder. And then death spiral is basically how fast you want it, but basically the Earth would slowly spiral in towards the sun until it gets eaten up. Um, and then here's a bunch of settings that you can change. You got known star systems, so this is um, ones that we have discovered in real life. There's like a thousand or more stars in this list, I think, so that's pretty cool. Constellation names mean you can use real space-based names and coordinates rather than like made up ones. Um, up to a certain amount, I think after a certain amount it starts doing the randomly generated ones. Um, then you got orbital moons for planets, uh, orbital motion for planets slash moons, orbital motion for asteroids. These p kind of play more into the, um, the sort of, these eat up some CPU time, but not too much. Mostly it's more for an aesthetic. If you just want to have them sit still, it makes it a little easier for your ships to get back and forth because then it's not constantly changing distance. But for realism, you want to leave these checked by default. Um, generate new races as NPRs, of course. You want to leave this default because, I mean, if it's not checked, then any new races will require somebody to control them. So that would be if you wanted to um, add a player, you could have it set up so that they could be part of an NPR. So you could play through until you find one, and then somebody else could take control of that AI. Uh, or not AI. It'd be empty AI, um, essentially. Allow human NPRs. Um, yeah, as human. So basically this would allow you to have human colonies. So sort of like Battlestar Galactica, where you could have human colonies um, that were basically abandoned a long time ago. So you could role play into that pretty heavily. Um, generate non-TN races only. So you could generate basically so that everyone who gets generated is all pre-industrial and they have to develop the technology to get to um, trans-Newtonian physics. Um, I occasionally will check this out if I want to have like a fun little like humans or the OP race kind of thing. You got precursors. These ones I always leave on because they're one of the easier ones. They are difficult in fighting them, but they don't really move outside their system. So they're fun little like obstacles to try and build a fleet to overcome. 
Uh, invaders, star storms, and rockets are all quite difficult ones, but you'll want to read through these and like learn about what they do. But essentially, they're all like different types of um, NPRs that you might meet, but they're a specific type. They do specific things. Um, I think. Let me see. Yeah, so these ones are ones that don't build spacecraft. They literally just stay on the ground. They're small tribes, so these ones aren't too bad either. Um, and let's see, NPR generate precursors. Uh, yeah, so you have precursors that could spawn essentially aliens with high technology. Um, and then you got star swarms um, and ether F. So essentially these are the same as these, except these ones are the players generating them, and these are the uh, AI, if they can generate them, to let these in. You got realistic commander promotions, um, which would basically mean that um, basing them on skills, metal, and time and grade. So the longer a commander is in a position, the, the more likely it is to go up. And you can also do commander political bonuses. So if you're going for a, like in my current series, I'm going for a very meritocratic government. So their bonus, their commanders are, are pushed up based on skill, not on their political bonuses. Um, but if you want a more realistic uh, one, you'd go for this because, I mean, in real life, people move up based on politics, who their parents are, who they're friends with. Um, inexperienced fleet penalties, I always leave this on because then you get punished for not training fleets. Um, all jump points are stable. This one is basically, um, you don't need jump drives at this point. Um, entire jump ships are unnecessary. You can just basically send all ships through jump points. Um, some people like that because you get a bit easier management. You don't have to worry about building jump drives and like jump ships and like stabilizing them. They're just always stable. Uh, no maintenance required. So if you want a bit easier of a gameplay, you don't have to worry about maintenance supply points. Um, civilian shipping lines active. This basically is with this off. No civilian ships will ever be built. Meaning that I think civilians can still build mining colonies, um, but they only use uh, mash drivers. They don't uh, send any ships back and forth. Um, this is good for performance, especially late game, but um, it's a bit less realistic. Lost vein harvesters. So this is shipping lanes, including fuel harvesters and list of ship types they build. New tech from Conquest. So this lets you, whenever you conquer a pop, uh, pop you can actually get some tech from them. You get like, I think it's, you get points uh, based on how much of that tech they have. So if they're like three techs ahead of you, um, you're and you get a large population, you're going to get a lot of points for those specific techs because um, you'll get racial technology points for those. All right, and this is your starting year. So if you want to role play, you could, this basically just um, is for the date. Otherwise, it just like it doesn't really matter. Otherwise, um, this is more for if you want to role play. You know, we're in, we're in 2021, so you don't want to be starting in 2021 unless you've got some alternate universe thing that you set up. You got number of player races, non-player races, minimum salt jump points, um, earth mineral deposits. So this is basically how much minerals earth has. Uh, minimum NPR distance. So if you want them to at least be X amount far away, that way you have some time to expand and like grow, um, you can set this to a certain distance and then the maximum. So if you want to only spawn them around you, um, that way you can, um, if you jumped quickly and didn't spawn any, you could keep exploring outwards i don't necessarily like this one i mean nothing there's anything wrong with it it's like it's a little confusing for me having a maximum because it's like if you're even if you're on the far out of reach i think there should still be a chance um but yeah and then this is the ad plan x which if you know anything about that that's a neat little thing you can do um all right but yeah so that's it and then you'll just do create game and it'll create a game. I'm gonna cancel this because I'm actually gonna uh, create a game of this later and I don't want that same game. Um, but yeah, and I think that's pretty much it for just starting a new game, um, just from scratch. Uh, one thing I will say here at the end is um, actually in events, there's some cool stuff they've added. So for example, if you colorize um, specific events uh, in here, you can actually import and export colors so that way you have um, you can copy them from game to game, which is real nice. I like this. And he set it up in a pretty flexible way that basically means that if you go to other versions, even though the save game may not carry over, the colors will still carry over. So you can use these in all your games. You can just export once and then just keep importing it for every save game, which is pretty awesome. But yeah, I think that is it for today. Um, if you have any more questions, leave them down in the description and I'll try to see if I can't make a video about them kind of covering them. 
Otherwise, thank you for watching and make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already because that always really helps the channel. Uh, but yeah, peace out.